What's interesting though is I interviewed Melvin Farmer. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. That's one of the founders of the A-Tray Crips. Right. right. A-Tray Gangster Crips. Mm -hmm. And he actually knows uh, Chris Darden. Chris Darden represented him before. Gotcha. And he actually told me the reason why Chris Darden took on that case. Why do you think he took on that, you know, representing Eric Holder? Well, I, mean, I know why he took it on. Why is that? Because Eric Holder probably, uh, you know, when you seen John Hinckley shoot the president, he got to use a defense called uh, mental uh, in, uh, uh, capacity. He was mentally unstable. Temporary insanity? Yeah. yeah. That's what would have been used here probably, which blacks aren't allowed to use. So he'd have probably been testing the water because I text him and say, uh, are you trying to try this case under temporary insanity mental illness? And uh, uh, he didn't respond, but I say, I understand that's what you're probably trying to do. And that's what blacks aren't afforded to do and how a lot of times uh, these cases could be somewhere they were mental ill health to where they should have been sent to a, a, a hospital or some and treated for treatment as opposed to uh, mass incarceration or being incarcerated and treated as a criminal. We was curious about that. What, 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 uh, this what is the reason. About? Was that you consistently see white criminals avoiding the death penalty by uh, pleading temporary insanity, right? Case in point, Charles Manson. Charles Manson. They abolished the death penalty. That's what kept him from the chair, didn't it? Because uh, at, no. one point, at one point he was on death row and then they abolished the death penalty in like 76 or 77 they, or something. When, when did they execute Tookie? That called um in two thousand and five. Well, there you go. No, they abolished it and then they brought it back. Okay. So during the time when they abolished it, I think he had lawyers go in there and got his sentence, his death sentence commuted from death. Did he get to the death penalty? Life, oh, life in um, prison. Let's, let's look it up instead of trying to go off memory. Let's mm -hmm. actually see what what the internet has to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Manson was originally sentenced to death, but his sentence was commuted to life with the possibility of parole after the California Supreme Court invalidated the state's death, pe death penalty in 1972. Okay, you're right. I was in there with Bruce Davis. Who was that? One of his crime. Is the driver. I think he was the driver. Oh, the, really? Yeah, we were in CMC together. We didn't talk about the case or nothing <laughs> like that, but we used to go to visit sometime. And okay. He'd be out there with his wife and reading the Bible and stuff. So I in wanting to know who he was relevant to the case. You know, I did a little research on, on Manson and the okay. situation. Well, so let's just take him out of the equation. You're right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there are people who escape the death penalty by reason of temporary insanity. They are. And he said that Chris Darden wanted to actually set a precedent for, for a black inmate to basically use that same argument you rarely see that happen on the black side. And if you really think about it, it's not a bad argument. That's how I thought that, you know, if this ever does go to trial. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, well, think about it, right? Oh. Your Honor. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. He, he killed this guy in broad daylight with cameras around with a dozen witnesses. Clearly, this man was not sane in order to do something so reckless. He must have been insane during this time. Let's not give him the death penalty, or let's not put him in prison. Let's put him into a psychiatric ward for the rest of his life, which is a much better deal, if you think about it. Vlad, who... I'm not going to ask if you ever killed anybody, but... I've never who killed do anybody. Who you think... Okay, okay. <laughs> Let me just put that out there. I've never killed anybody. Look, okay? Look. When I'm, I'm just gonna say, man, uh, I ain't even gonna touch that, man. I'm not even gonna touch that. <laughs> not man. gonna touch it. No, nah, I'm All not right, gonna fair touch enough. that, man. I'm not. Fair gonna enough. Touch. Well, anyways, I mean, really, the point is, who's really sane when they kill somebody? Yeah, I see what you're saying. You're never really sane. 
you know what? This bitch been cheating on me for six months now. You know what? I'm finna go kill this bitch, cut her hands off, cut her arms, and throw them in the bag and go throw her in the ocean. Or, you know, oh, there go that motherfucker that I've been looking to kill. You know, let me go kill him right now and if I get caught or if anybody see me or, you know, I'm trying to kill them too and, you know, leave no witnesses and if I get caught, it was just worth it right now. That's, <laughs> <laughs> who's really sane when they kill somebody? Well, I can tell you this. Not unless it's self-defense or right, you're right. in the heat of a situation where you're fighting for your life. Yeah. Well, I can tell you this. I recently saw there was a documentary about uh, uh, Lorena Bobbitt. Remember mm -hmm. that whole situation? She cut off Whack her dude, yeah, she, she, off. she cut off her husband's penis and then yeah. got in the car and, and threw it in the bushes. Yeah. She claimed temporary insanity because she proved in a court of law that her husband beat her and was physically abusive. That she right would show on. up to work with bruises and all that. Right on. And she cried on the stand and did this whole situation Beautiful. of I was I was being beaten so badly and I was and he had just I guess tried to rape me or something and that was the only thing I could do to get out of that situation. I personally think it's bullshit because if you because this was not a defensive move. You see what I'm saying? If it was that bad, you could have left. To take a knife out and cut someone's penis off and get in your car and drive somewhere and throw it out the window so they can't reattach it, that sounds like calculated moves. But she got off. It's insane. No, it's she, a, it's, she, it's, 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 she, you know she what? got off with temporary insanity and she had to do two months in a, in a mental institution. She should have gotten 10 years as far as I'm concerned. Well, you know, no, you, know, you don't if you agree. Kick a man in his balls or something, or punch him down there. You know that the spot that's supposed to hurt the worst. So she probably, yeah, I, I disable him. This is disable him and give me time to get away and whatever, whatever. I don't know what her motivation was, but if she had proof that he had been whooping her ass and all that, and that was her recourse right there, like. I got your ass. You know what I mean? All right, well, hey, you play the game. You play, play the abuse game. You get what you got coming. Yeah, I guess. That women are, <laughs> women are physically inferior True. to men. 